Hi everybody, it's Cindy from Asner Cindy. I hope this finds you well. Let me get my car turned off. I got to the airport parking lot a little bit early before my flight, so I thought I'd spend a few minutes. I was talking to my husband this morning, and um, those of you, well first let me go back a little bit. For those of you that don't know my story, I'm a registered nurse, and I've been a registered nurse for 38 years. I will be 60 years old next month, and as far back as I remember, and I'm talking as far back as I remember, I have always been overweight. For those of you that have lived that life with me, you feel my pain. For those of you that maybe have gained weight in recent years, I'm sure you have many happy memories of childhood and being an average sized teenager. I was 98 pounds in the first grade. And I have, um, back when I went to the sea, I was born in 57, so back when I was growing up and in school, obesity was very uncommon in school children. And to think through and think back to what I went through as an obese child when the vast majority of my classmates were not obese. And, you know, the ribbing and the oh, all the things you go through that are inside are so painful and so hurtful. But uh, different people that grow up as an obese child take different approaches. I chose to be that happy, outgoing, everybody's friend, funny, that person, that girl, grown up. And it, I didn't let it stop me from doing a lot of things, but it just naturally kept me from doing many things that I would have done or would have done differently. So I was talking to my husband this morning because I just hit my 10, month, 10 months on keto. Um, my highest weight my entire life was about 22 years ago after the birth of my second daughter when I skyrocketed up to 305 pounds. And that's a lot to carry on a five foot two frame. I was a size 28 clothing. And back then, 30 years ago, that was hard to find. I, I sewed a lot of my own clothes because there was just no other way to get clothing that fit. And I wore a size 44 double D bra and I was miserable. I couldn't fit in a booth at a, a restaurant. I couldn't buckle seat belts um, on a plane. I had to ask for the extender belt. It was miserable. When I drove, the steering wheel rubbed on my tummy, on my belly when I turned the, the steering wheel because I had to have it close enough that I could press the brake. So anyway, all that to say, I was thinking this morning and talking to my husband, I said, you know, he and I've been married 10 years. We just hit our 10th anniversary. And I said to him, I said, you know, you've never seen me this small. I still have ways to go. I still have 30 or 40 pounds to go. But my daughter, Rachel, and I decided that this, this weekend when I was with her, we decided we're not going to apologize that, hey, I still got a, lot, a long way to go because we've come so far. But we were reflecting. It's, so this is my thankful um, thoughtful Thursday reflection on what's happened to me in 10 months. What has changed in my life, in my heart, in my, in my thought processes and how I deal with food and what am I going to do going forward? Cause this is uncharted territory for me. I, this morning I was 176.2 pounds. So I'm like 50, right at 55 pounds on my ketogenic journey. And I've still got probably another 30 to go, but I was thinking, I have hope. I have hope. Um, I don't want to cry. <laughs> but when you're 59 years old and you've tried everything, you've tried everything, and you're a smart person and you're a caring person and you're a nurse and you theoretically know what to do, you know, eat less, exercise more. But I couldn't do it. I could not do it. It made me feel weak and discouraged and depressed and unworthy. And in May, <laughs> late May, and I go, oh, can't mess up the makeup. I got to go to work. I'm, I'm flying. Um, but in May, I discovered late May, the power of ketogenic eating. And I realized that I'm not weak and I'm not food addicted. I'm carb addicted. That my body, and I think many of us out there, our bodies do not respond well to carbs. We have a, a pleasure reward center in our brain that when we encounter something that brings us pleasure, it releases dopamine. And I have a very sensitive response to carbohydrates. And I get that rush of pleasure and it's a comfort food. Sure it is. It releases dopamine. And I, 
And I would enjoy that feeling, but the feeling would go away because as my pancreas sensed the rise in my blood sugars as those carbohydrates were digested, it would do what it's supposed to do and it would squirt some insulin in and you probably hear a plane going overhead because I'm sitting in the parking lot. The insulin would come out and bring the blood sugar down back down to a normal level and then I would be hungry again and I'm like, and it was like this driving and I've learned since with leptin and ghrelin, there are two hormones besides insulin that control either satiety, meaning I'm satisfied or hunger. And I would just think about food all the time. I was trying to explain to my husband, I said, I don't know if you know, but someone like me that's always been overweight or you're carb addicted, you think about food all the time because your blood sugar's up, your blood sugar's down. And I can honestly tell you that I'm, I don't suffer with that anymore. I don't. <laughs> food is, I enjoy it. I make good food. I make good keto food, but food doesn't control me anymore. <laughs> Do you know what that means? And I, I don't have my glasses on. I'm crying, so I can't see any comments that you guys are writing. Do you know what that means to realize? That's why I do what I do. So I'm doing these videos. <laughs> what a baby. It's why I want to share with everybody I can that there's hope that we have don't all have to follow the same eating plan and keto may not be right for every one of you there's research out that shows about 30 percent of americans can eat carbohydrates ad lib and not be bothered by them and do them in moderation that means about 70 percent of us have have developed a problem over time so i'm i'm very thoughtful today i'm very thankful 10 months in here's what i've learned i'm powerful i can choose what i eat and I don't have to obsess. I don't have to sneak eat. I don't have to hide food and, and do it in private where no one sees because I don't want anyone to know how addicted I am. I don't have food hidden in various places or in my desk and at home and in my car and places that if any of you have struggled with that, you know what I mean. And the, the shame and the embarrassment. So I am going to stop crying because I feel so empowered and I want each and every one of you to feel that too. And I want you to know that when you voluntarily reduce, especially the complex, um, excuse me, the heavily processed foods, the foods that are really, really high level of carbs with no nutrition, look for nutrient dense foods. When I did that after about the first four or five days, the first four or five days, I was pretty miserable as I was detoxing. Um, but after that, there was freedom on the other side of carbs. And there's freedom for many of us. So I've realized that I'm not weak. What else have I realized in these 10 months? I've realized that it's not a race. I was so freaked out about, well, I lost, I haven't lost a pound in a week. I went three months, ladies and gentlemen, staying the same, 182. 183, 182, 183, and I'd, I'd fuss at my daughter or my sister, Debbie Stokes, I love you so much, you're the one that started this whole thing, and and she would say, go watch your water balloon video, go watch your water balloon video. That water balloon video that I did back in July at her house has 324,000 views right now. I might be about 5,000 of them, so I, <laughs> go listen to my own medicine about... Um, that don't trust the scales, that our body is redesigning itself inside. So I've learned it's not a race and that since this will be my lifestyle, will I add carbs back in somewhat, maybe go up to 40 carbs a day when I reach my goal, sure. But I'm gonna enjoy the journey and I'm wearing size 12s now. Some of the 12s are loose. I put on a pair of size 10s this morning, um, Calvin Klein suit and a little too snug to wear uh, for a presentation, but it fits. So I've learned I'm powerful, there's freedom, it's not a race, it's a lifestyle, and that I'm going to stop fretting about how fast it happens. If another 10 months, I'm finally, if it takes that long to get to my goal, great, because it's not a race. This is something that will be my my choice to live the rest of my life. And the other thing I wanna do as I move into, there's I only have almost 10,000 of you guys following me now. What in the world? <laughs> Hello, I have no social media savvy. I don't I don't know what I'm doing. 
I really don't. Um, but I think there's such a, a hue and cry for us to find an answer, especially women. A lot of you guys um, are in my demographic. You're women somewhere between 40 and 55 or 60. We tend to have hormonal issues and our metabolism slows down and we take care of everybody but ourselves. But I just wanted to um, let you know that when you do this lifestyle, there's a lot more besides weight loss. Please don't think this is something you're going to do for a few weeks or a few months and then stop and go back to what you did before and everything be okay. Because if I've finally found that key that unlocks the door to my addiction, I finally found that. But I want to let you know that when you use ketones as your fuel source versus glucose, when your body is generating ketones via either the fat you're taking in or using your fat stores, because there's different ways your body can produce ketones. And, and there's this exogenous ketone drink I drink that if you watch some of the other videos, and if you're interested, uh, just respond interested in information on ketone drinks. But I use these different things to fuel my body with ketones because there's so much research out there. Google this, go into PubMed, uh, look at, for some YouTube videos. There's so much resource to help us understand that ketone bodies reduce inflammation. They help, they're neuroprotective. There's actual uh, skin benefits. There's anti-aging benefits. And I'm, I'm talking about research. Now, I'm, I'm a nurse. I'm not here to diagnose, treat, or cure. I'm, I'm just sharing with you my journey and what I've learned online and the articles I've read and the conferences I've gone to. There's so many benefits to ketones as your fuel source that I hope you join me on this journey. I hope that we continue to increase our health, that we become better wives, mothers, daughters, children. If I've got some men online with me, I don't want to ignore you. Husbands, fathers, dads, friends, that we continue to grow in health. I, um, you think about sometimes being right at 60, next month I'll be 60. And I'm happy. I've got 30 good years at least. I want to be that sassy old lady walking through the mall. So um, that's it. This is my thoughtful, thankful Thursday. In 10 months, I've learned many things about myself. I've learned many things about what I put in my mouth impacts literally everything else in my life. And now that I'm not addicted and chasing carbs all the time, there's such freedom. There's such freedom. So. That's it. Now I'm probably late to get on the shuttle bus to go over to the airport. So I'm going to hang up. I will look at your comments. If you ask any questions or there's anything I can do for you, I will try my best to get back to you. But if it takes a little while, please remember there's almost 10,000 of you now. So uh, thank you for staying with me, those that have joined me live. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed day and that we continue towards health together. Thanks, everybody. Bye.